Hello everyone, and welcome to this Diablo 3 Dungeon Guide for the Monk Uliana Stratagem set. We'll be going over how to set up your character, and I'll also explain how to complete both primary dungeon objectives. Keep watching until the end to see a full playthrough of the entire set dungeon with additional tips. To get started, let's first take a look at the set bonuses so we'll know how to gear out our character. This set revolves around the Exploding Palm and Seven-Sided Strike skills, both which receive damage buffs from the set. Every third hit of our Spirit Generator attack will apply Exploding Palm to nearby enemies, so we won't have to cast it on each manually one at a time. This is an important mechanic for achieving one of the primary dungeon objectives. Once Exploding Palm is applied to an enemy, Seven-Sided Strike can detonate it, instantly doing additional area damage. The area application of Exploding Palm from the two-piece set bonus is great for large groups of enemies, but for single enemies and smaller groups, you will want to cast Exploding Palm manually on at least one monster, then Seven-Sided Strike, to spend less time killing them. To complete one of the primary dungeon objectives, some grouping of enemies is required, which we will be taking the Cyclone Strike skill to help facilitate. Cyclone Strike, Exploding Palm, and Seven-Sided Strike all cost a healthy portion of Spirit Resource, and we will need to cast them frequently. Luckily, we are motivated to cast our Spirit Generator attack, Crippling Wave, often to apply Exploding Palm. Therefore, considering all of this, Spirit Generation, Attack Speed, Resource Cost Reduction, and Cooldown Reduction will be the main priorities for the gearing and skills setup. We will also want to make sure our damage output is not terribly high to ensure monsters can stay alive while we mark them with Exploding Palm. In this setup, we are using five of the six set pieces in the shoulders, torso, hands, legs, and feet slots. In the head slot, we have Leoric's Crown, which provides increased cooldown reduction with a diamond equipped in the helm. In the wrist slot, we take Spirit Guards for a toughness increase. And in the waist slot, we have Vigilante Belt. This belt does not have a special legendary power, but it does come with an inherent cooldown reduction stat. In the main hand slot, we have Engium, which provides significant cooldown reduction after killing elite monsters. And in the offhand slot, we take the Fist of Azterask, which buffs the damage of Exploding Palm. In the next slot, we have the Star of Azkarenth. This amulet is virtually mandatory for the dungeon. One of the primary dungeon objectives requires us to avoid taking fire damage, of which there are many sources in the dungeon. It is not recommended to attempt this dungeon without this legendary power equipped. In one of the finger slots, we have Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, which provides cooldown reduction. And in the other finger slot, we have Band of the Rue Chambers, which provides some spirit generation. When it comes to rerolling stats on the gear, the top priority is cooldown reduction. Then take anything that increases survivability. Be careful adjusting stats to increase damage output too much. We want it relatively low to ensure we have sufficient time to apply Exploding Palm to multiple enemies in a group before they're killed. For Kanai's Cube in the weapon slot, we have the Flow of Eternity, which provides buffs to 7-sided strike. In the armor slot, we take Gungdo Gear, which provides buffs to Exploding Palm. And in the jewelry slot, we have Ring of Royal Grandeur, which allows us to gain the 6-piece set bonus while only having 5 of the 6 set pieces equipped. For gems, we have a diamond in the head slot for cooldown reduction, diamonds in the torso and leg slots for toughness, and amethyst in the weapon slots. For legendary gems, we have Golgok of Swiftness for attack speed, toughness, and cooldown reduction, esoteric alteration for toughness, and molten wildebeest gizzard for life regeneration. For Paragon, the main priorities are movement speed, maximum spirit, cooldown reduction, attack speed, and resource cost reduction. Remember to unassign points in any damage related stats if you need to lower damage output. Next, let's go over the skills. We'll be using Exploding Palm with the Flesh as Weak Rune and Seven-Sided Strike with the Sustained Attack Rune. Both of these skills receive buffs from the set bonuses and are key damage dealing skills. Next, we have Dashing Strike with the Way of the Falling Star Rune for significant increased mobility. And then Cyclone Strike with the Implosion Rune. This skill is critical to help group up enemies for one of the dungeon objectives. Next, we have Crippling Wave, which is our primary attack and spirit generator. We take the Tsunami Rune for its superior area coverage for applying Exploding Palm to enemies through the two-piece set bonus mechanic. And next, we take Mantra of Healing with the Circular Breathing Rune, mainly for its increase to spirit generation. For the passive skills, we have Exalted Soul for increased spirit generation, and Beacon of Yar for increased cooldown reduction, and then Alacrity for increased attack speed, and Seize the Initiative for additional increased attack speed. Attack speed translates to increased spirit generation and faster application of Exploding Palm to enemies through the two-piece set bonus. Now let's go over the dungeon objectives. The first primary dungeon objective is to simultaneously explode 15 enemies marked with Exploding Palm four times. In order to achieve this objective, you'll look for larger packs of monsters, use Cyclone Strike to group them up tightly, and then start attacking with Crippling Wave. Every third hit will mark all the monsters surrounding you with Exploding Palm, so you won't have to cast it on each one manually. After each one is marked, keep attacking with Crippling Wave, and once one enemy reaches zero health, Exploding Palm will detonate and the rest in the pack will die. To expedite the killing, you can cast Seven-Sided Strike to detonate the Exploding Palms once all the monsters are marked. Using Seven-Sided Strike in this fashion can save you some time, but if you don't have good cooldown reduction, it's best to save Seven-Sided Strike for single monsters. A lot of the monster packs have right at 15 enemies, so it's important to make sure you round up every enemy in an area before beginning to mark them with Exploding Palm, particularly since the skill does damage over time. All of the dungeon enemies except the elite monsters will lose interest in pursuing you very quickly after you get close to them, so don't try to coax them to travel long distances unless you have the spirit available to pull them together multiple times with Cyclone Strike. 
If you don't see enough monsters on a single screen for a 15 plus enemy grouping, then it's probably best just to take them down and move on to the next larger group. Otherwise, you'll waste precious seconds that you'll need to traverse this large dungeon. The second primary dungeon objective is to take no fire damage for the duration of the dungeon. If you have the Star of Azkaranth amulet equipped, then you will be immune to fire damage and will not have to worry about this objective at all. If you don't have it equipped, this objective can be extremely difficult without a lot of practice. The elites and the larger skeleton monsters both have fire attacks that you will need to avoid. The best way to avoid them is generally just to attack and kill them quickly before they have a chance to damage you. Your inherent crowd control interrupts and freezes with Cyclone Strike and Crippling Wave will prevent the monsters from damaging you initially. Then you will want to kill them off fast before they have time to go into an attack. The dungeon also contains several fire traps you will need to avoid. You will want to be careful using Dashing Strike since you don't want to inadvertently dash into a trap. The location of these fire traps are shown on the dungeon map in the next section of this guide, so make sure to get familiar with the locations if needed to know what areas you need to be careful around. Note that there are also several fire traps on the walls that will come unhinged if you damage them. However, these traps do not do damage to you, so you don't have to worry about these. Of all the fire damage sources, the elite monsters will be the most challenging to deal with since they are mobile, fast, and will cast a flame breathing attack without much warning and will sometimes even cast it back to back. They can also be hiding just out of sight around a corner and will not hesitate to cast this attack on you, making it very difficult for you to round corners or enter rooms. You will want to tweak your stats to have enough damage output to be able to kill the elites with a single seven-sided strike. If you can't do it with one, you'll likely get damaged by a flame breathing attack they begin to cast while you're caught in the seven-sided strike attack animation. Having to wait for multiple cooldowns worth of seven-sided strikes for each elite will also take a lot of time you might need for clearing the rest of the dungeon. When you first see an elite, try to get in close and apply Exploding Palm while they're still moving around before they hesitate and go into their flame breathing attack animation. Then cast seven-sided strike to kill them quickly. You may need to reposition yourself to keep some distance from them before casting seven-sided strike. You don't have to be super close to be able to damage them with it. If you don't take them down with one hit, then kite them around while you wait on the seven-sided strike cooldown to expire. And avoid attacking them with Crippling Wave if possible to stay out of melee range. Next, let's take a look at the dungeon map. This dungeon is huge, and it is critical to move from area to area as quickly as practical. There is a lot of ground to cover, so you will want to have a plan before entering. I've broken up the map into four segments. Segment number one takes you through the initial relatively linear portion of the dungeon. At the end of this segment, there are four square side rooms flanking the intersection of two main hallways. Start segment number two by heading to the right, clearing one of these rooms, but you'll generally want to save the rest of this intersection for segment number four. Due to the numerous walls in this area, it can be difficult to group up monsters, so it's best to not be tempted to spend time here until later in the dungeon run. This intersection is the only spot in the dungeon that you will pass by a second time. Everywhere else, make sure to uncover all of your minimap as you go, clearing all the offshoots, passages, and side rooms. You probably won't have time to return to clear any residual enemies left behind. Segment number two ends with two rooms encircled by hallways that you'll want to make sure you clear thoroughly. Then segment number three loops around and you'll want to end it as it's shown here and backtrack to start segment number four. If you do not have the Star of Azkaranth amulet equipped, then you will need to worry about fire damage. There are five large fire traps on the ground you will need to avoid. These locations will periodically have flames come up out of the ground for a few seconds before subsiding for another few seconds. While it's easily possible to time it for running past the traps when there are no flames, the best approach is just to use your dashing strike skill to teleport past these spots. It's not worth the risk of getting hit. Additionally, there are two large fire rooms that contain several fire traps. You will want to be very careful traversing these areas. Either time it to move past each trap right after their flames subside, or use your dashing strike skill to skip past them. These larger fire trap rooms usually do not contain any monsters, so you generally only have to worry about passing through the area. However, they will occasionally contain some enemies, so be on your guard and fight them without standing on one of the fire traps. This is why segment number 4 saves the second larger fire trap room for the very end. Most likely, you won't have to enter it at all. The Star of Azkaranth Amulet will completely negate the effect of these fire traps, and if you have it equipped, you can just run right through all these trap locations, saving time and hassle. So now that you have the setup and you know how to approach the dungeon, let's head to it. Go to Act 5, then to the Survivor's Enclave Waypoint. In town, head northeast to the portal to Zacharim Cathedral. From there, keep heading northeast. The dungeon entrance is tucked away in a corner on the left side. And next, we'll look at the playthrough. For this run, I went with pretty barebones gear to demonstrate techniques. I had to equip both a Flow of Eternity weapon and Gungdo gear bracers to have enough damage to reliably kill the elites with a single seven-sided strike. I also had to equip Spirit Guard's bracers to reliably survive hits when grouping enemies. Any additional items or stats that you get consistent with the recommendations earlier will give you a much easier time completing the dungeon. Before you even attempt this dungeon, make sure you have the Star of Azkaranth amulet equipped. This playthrough shows a successful run without it, but the dungeon is much, much easier with this Fire Damage Prevention amulet equipped. Start working on the first objective right away, looking for groupings of 15 plus enemies. Don't waste time with small groups, just take them down and move on.
Here's the first fire trap. Make sure you have a dashing strike charge available and use it to jump across. If there are any monsters sitting on top of the fire trap, then use cyclone strike to pull them out of it. Don't attempt to run across it, it's not worth the risk. There was grouping number one of four. As soon as you see an elite, go after it as aggressively as you can. That one came out of nowhere and immediately started casting a flame breathing attack. Luckily, we were able to avoid it by being in the seven sided strike attack animation. Here's another group. Suck them in close with Cyclone Strike, then attack with Crippling Wave to apply Exploding Palm and kill them off for group number two. Here's the second fire trap. There's a monster on it. Wait for him to come out, then use Dashing Strike to jump across. Another small group, take them down. Now we're starting segment number two of the dungeon map. If you see single enemies, just take them down and move on. Another small group, kill them off also. Here's the first large fire trap room. Just be patient and wait for the flames to stop before moving across. Use dashing strike to jump across flames if you have charges available. Another elite and he started a flame breathing cast right away. Our seven sided strike was on cooldown, so it's important to stay on the move to avoid getting hit until the cooldown resets. This looks like plenty of monsters here for another pull. Pull them in close and attack with crippling wave for group number three of four. Make sure to clear out these rooms before moving on. With the single enemies and smaller packs, if you have enough damage output, a standalone seven sided strike should be enough to kill them. If you find you need some additional damage, you can first manually cast an exploding palm on one of them, then use seven sided strike to finish them off. This two skill combination is critical for taking down the elites quickly. Be very careful around doorways and corners because elites may be waiting on the other side. Kite the elites away until you're ready to apply a manual exploding palm plus seven sided strike. Don't assign a follower for this dungeon, they will just get in the way and interfere with you grouping up monsters. Here's the third fire trap. Be very careful around this one, since there's usually monsters standing on or near it. Pull them out and take them down. Use dashing strike to jump across. Another pack and there's group number 4 of 4. Now we can just focus on clearing the remaining enemies while avoiding fire damage. Instead of moving forward through the second large fire trap room, we now backtrack to start segment number 4. Another elite, make sure your skills are available, then rush in and take them down. Make sure when you're grouping enemies to not stand still for too long. It's important to start attacking with Crippling Wave pretty quickly to take advantage of its freeze mechanic, or keep casting Cyclone Strike to keep disrupting enemy attacks. Here's the fourth fire trap. Cyclone Strike will also interrupt an elite casting its flame breathing attack if you're in close proximity with one and your seven sided strike is still on cooldown. Even though you can disrupt the groups of enemies with the Crippling Wave and Cyclone Strike skills, you will want to make sure you have enough toughness to avoid getting demolished because you will inevitably take some hits. You can also use Dashing Strike to get out of the middle of a pack and get some breather room if you need to. It's always good to try to keep a charge of Dashing Strike available for emergency uses. Toward the end of segment number 4, you want to finish clearing out these 4 square side rooms. You might have left some stragglers around here. Just one enemy remaining, so we'll need to head into the second large fire trap room. There he is, and of course he's an elite. Take him down quickly. And we're done. Good luck trying to finish this one. If you enjoyed the guide and would like to see more content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.